Hey everybody, welcome to All Team Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we are going to be talking about the difference between two methods to design a PCB stack up. One of these relies on your manufacturer and it is called a controlled impedance design, and the other is called controlled dielectric design, also sometimes known as controlled stack up design. Now, oftentimes when you see me talk about stack up design on this channel, you will see me pick dielectrics and layer thicknesses from specific products that are available on the market or from distributors. The alternative method doesn't involve doing that, and that is actually what is known as controlled impedance design. So I'm gonna break down the methodology involved in both approaches to stack up design, and we're gonna look at an example inside of All Team Designer. Make sure to open up your copy of All Team Designer and follow along. So controlled impedance design and controlled dielectric design are two different terms you will see if you start looking on PCB manufacturer websites. These are sometimes confused or conflated with each other when you start looking at just the designer side of things. So I've seen some designers use controlled impedance and controlled dielectric interchangeably. And if you look on some other websites, you will actually see the two terms used interchangeably or you will just see controlled impedance being used to refer also to controlled dielectric. What are the differences between these two approaches? Well, it's pretty simple. Now, in controlled dielectric, essentially what you as the designer are doing is you are specifying everything that has to go into the stack up. So when I say you're specifying everything that goes into the stack up, we of course want to specify the dielectric constant. So that's the first piece. This would of course be the DK value in the data sheet as well as the DF value. The other thing that we could do is we could just specify a product name for our materials that appear on each layer. And then we specify a thickness. And so the thickness and the DK and the product name all have to match up. So in other videos, especially one on, I believe, dielectric laminate constructions, you have seen me show a uh, example of a core and prepreg data table from Isola. And I've shown other examples of these data sheets as well. And these sheets will give you the specific constructions that show a particular DK value and a particular thickness and even things like the glass weave alongside the product name. So this tells your manufacturer exactly what you want to put into the stack up. Once you've gathered all of this information, then you would need to compile it into a table. Now, if you're using Altium or you're using some other tools, this can actually be found inside of the native design files. The problem is that manufacturers generally don't look at your native design files unless you're hiring them to do engineering work for you. So instead, you need to actually give them a stack up table if you want specific dielectrics in your stack up. So that stack up table is going to look something like this where we basically have signal layer one and then dielectric, signal layer two, dielectric, and so on and so forth. We might have a thickness. If it's, let's say, one ounce copper, this will be like 1.4 mil. Same thing here, we might have 1.4 mil. And then here you would put your outer layer dielectric thickness. So just as an example, let's say it's four mil. And then here you would wanna then put, let's say, your DK value. Let's say your DK value is four for your particular product. And then you might want to include any other notes or the DF. So we put the DF value and then we would put some notes here. And then some note here would be essentially the type of material or the product name. So maybe this is 370HR. And if you guys watch this channel, you know I'm a fan of Isol 370HR. Here, if you're looking at copper and you want to put a note, you might say just electrodeposited copper. Same thing here, electrodeposited copper. This is how you would specify all of these different materials in a controlled dielectric approach. So in a controlled dielectric approach, you pick the dielectric constant and the thickness, and you're matching that up to a product that is actually available on the market. Now, if you're taking the controlled dielectric approach to design a PCB, that includes interfaces that need to have a specific impedance value, whose job is it to calculate the impedance and specifically whose job is it to calculate the trace width that corresponds to that impedance? It's your job as a designer 
to figure that out. So if you specify all of this data for your manufacturer when you're sending in your order, it is generally assumed that you, as the designer, have figured out what the width of your traces needs to be in order to hit all of your different impedance targets. This also means that it's your job to simulate it, and when you get back a uh, test board or when you get back a prototype, if you have the measurement capability, it's also gonna be your job to measure it. So the verification responsibility falls on you if you're gonna be using specific products to then build your stack up and you're requiring your fabricator to use those. Now, sometimes your fabricator will stock alternatives that are functionally equivalent to whatever you specify. So make sure that they supply that to you and of course, they require your approval before they actually make those substitutions. Now, because you have taken the steps to calculate the trace widths that you need that are going to work for your interfaces in this example board, then technically what you could do is you could have multiple impedance profiles on a single layer because you're gonna be the one responsible for ensuring that those calculations are accurate, that they get tested and verified properly, and that they meet your specifications. So you could have, let's say, a you know 50 ohm single-ended, you could have a 100 ohm differential, you could have a 90 ohm differential all on the same layer if you wanted to. So you could have all three of these on layer one if that's how you choose to engineer the board. Just note that when it comes time to maybe change out one of these laminates with something else, if you find that this laminate doesn't work during testing or that you just did the calculation wrong, this might throw off some of these different impedance calculations on this layer. So keep that in mind, and this is one of the reasons why it's actually a good idea to reduce the number of impedance profiles that you have on a given layer. Now that brings us to the controlled impedance approach. How does the controlled impedance approach work? Well, I'm gonna show you right now. So in the controlled impedance approach, we're taking a little bit of a different tactic to get a stack up designed. Rather than specifying a specific product name and rather than specifying a particular dielectric constant, what we actually do is we specify a trace width for a given uh, impedance target. So we basically say something to the effect of five mil traces need to have 50 ohm impedance. And we may say something to the effect of four mil wide traces slash eight mil spacing need to have 90 ohm impedance. So this would be single ended and this would be differential. So what we're doing is we're specifying this on particular layers. So for example, we may specify this five mil uh, requirement on layer one. We might specify this four mil, eight mil requirement on layer three, and so on and so forth. And this can continue all the way throughout the stack up as we need more impedance profiles in the design. So when you're actually delivering something to your fabrication house, what you're not doing is you're not specifying a DK value you're not specifying a thickness, and you're not even specifying a product name. Instead, you are actually specifying these impedance profiles that you wanna hit on each layer. So what the manufacturer is going to do is they're gonna actually take the time to mix and match different materials and thicknesses, and they're gonna figure out how to calculate this impedance using their available materials and thicknesses. They're gonna take the time to ensure that the calculation is correct. Then what they're gonna do is they will prepare a test coupon from those materials and they will verify their calculation from a test coupon. So they'll actually fabricate a test coupon with these different impedance profiles that you specified using the dielectric constant and the thickness that they calculated. They'll then measure it, generally using a time domain reflectometry measurement to ensure that it has the correct impedance. They could technically also do this with a vector network analyzer. It's just that that tends to be a much more expensive piece of equipment, a lot easier to do it with a time domain reflectometer. That's how they go through and verify everything in this, the stack up. Because really you're not specifying a stack up other than just a layer count. All you're specifying is impedance targets. 
Why did I break these two impedance profiles up onto different layers? It's because if I were to also set this on layer one, they might not be able to hit both of these requirements exactly for a given layer thickness and dielectric constant. They might be able to get pretty close. So for example, the five mil that you design into the board may not come out to 50 ohms. Maybe it comes out to 47 ohms. Simultaneously on that same layer, maybe that four mil, eight mil that you actually design into the PCB layout doesn't come out to 90 ohms differential. Maybe it comes out to 94 ohms differential. This is one of the dangers of putting both of these impedance profiles on the same layer when taking the controlled impedance approach. It's that you might not hit them both exactly. Now, you might hit them both within an acceptable tolerance. So here, this is just over 5%. Here, this is just about 5%. Now, if you can tolerate about 5% impedance, then these are gonna be okay. If you can tolerate 10% impedance deviation, then these are definitely okay. So whether or not you should do this really depends on the level of deviation from impedance that you can expect to see when they do this calculation and then what you can accept in the final result. So what's the easiest way to specify all of this for a manufacturer? Well, one easy way to do it is to use your fabrication drawing or you can send them a stack up table with the specific impedance profiles written into it. So both approaches are acceptable. Let's take a look on screen and see what one of those stack up tables might look like. So I'm here in a blog on the Altium website. And of course, what I wanna show you now is how to actually specify those requirements for a fabrication house. So there's a link to this blog in the description and you can click through to that and then give this a read. So here's an example from a actual fabrication drawing that I have submitted for a four layer PCB to one of my manufacturing partners. Here, what do we see? Well, we see a stack up table. We can see the four layers very clearly drawn. We see that the outer layers are pre-preg. We see that the internal is the core dielectric. And then we have some layer names here that correspond to our Gerber file designations. We also see that we have a through hole via. So all of the stuff that we need to specify the type of a stack up that we're building is included here. But the one thing that is not included here is the layer thicknesses and then the corresponding dielectric constant. But you can see down here, we have a note, 50 ohm impedance required for five mil wide traces on layers one and four. This is what tells your fabrication house and the target that they need to hit for this stack up. And then they can go and mix and match various materials to then hit that particular impedance target. What they're probably gonna come back with on this type of stack up is pretty simple. It's gonna be around a DK of four with an outer layer thickness of about 2.5. They might use something different depending on what they have available. And then what they're gonna do is they're gonna make up the rest of the dielectric thickness using the core layer. So the other thing that you would wanna specify here is of course the total board thickness. That's how they're gonna then figure out what the core layer thickness is gonna be. Now, if I just scroll down here, the other thing that I can do is I can create an impedance table. So this is an example impedance table that you see here that kind of looks like what I drew on the whiteboard. So here, this impedance table just lists specific impedance targets on my different layers in the PCB. This is what they're gonna use for verification when they design your stack up. Both of these images, the stack up image and then the impedance table, those can be created inside of Draftsman. So if you're an Altium user, you've got access to the Draftsman tool, go check out the Draftsman tool because it really nicely automates creation of all of these different features in your fabrication drawing. The last thing that you can do, and for a uh, higher volume or higher value builds, this is definitely something you should do, is you can include it in a statement of work. So when you are doing a commercial project, it is always good to develop a statement of work or a scope of work, an SOW, then they are going to refer to that whenever they have a question as far as what they need to be doing in the build. Thanks for watching everybody. This video should give you all the information that you need to take either the controlled dielectric approach or the controlled impedance approach to designing your PCB stack up. If you have any comments or questions, of course, leave these in the comments section. We'd love getting your comments and questions and make sure to subscribe to the channel. And last but not least, definitely on this, 
Don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. Yeah.